Hello, and welcome back to home again from Thailand, uh, RCA U42 Part 3. Hopefully today, we will put this thing to bed and be finished with it. We'll put it back in its cabinet. This will give us a chance to move on to the Howard FM converter. When I was preparing for this video, or part of the delay in getting this video out, was I was waiting on an item from eBay. And it's this Wavetech Model 4040A 20 megahertz sweet function generator. I have had experience with B&K products before, and typically they're not the greatest equipment on the face of the planet. Very bottom end, I believe a lot of their stuff is just made from Chineseium and rebadged when it gets here to the United States. But the price was reasonable, and this is, after all, the 10 buck test bench. This job that we're about to do with trying to open up the IF bandwidth of this RCA could be done with either one of my spectrum analyzers that have sweep generators in them, but nobody in their right mind is going to go out and spend twelve to fifteen or even two thousand dollars for a spectrum analyzer and sweep generator to do an alignment on an All-American 5. It doesn't make any sense, and those probably have brought enough IF transformers that this experiment I'm about to try isn't necessary anyway. This RCA appears to have very sharply tuned IF transformers and appears to my eyes, or my ears, to have constricted audio. Looking at the schematic, there is actually a notation here on the schematic where it says oscillograph connections vertical high to this point ground to chassis. I believe what they're alluding to is using either a sweep generator of some fashion or tuning the signal generator back and forth to uh, broaden up the IF curve. And in fact, in the rest of the documentation for this unit, it has an alignment procedure. What the you know how to line everything up here. And it says, for additional details, refer to booklet RCA Victor Receiver Alignment. I did a quick search online on eBay and online and can find no reference to that. That may have been something that only went out to RCA dealers. However, I suspect it originally, or they originally intended for this receiver to be aligned with a staggered IF because they mentioned the oscillograph, which is 1940 speak for oscilloscope, to be used for the IF alignment. And briefly getting back to the BK Precision, I waited here four, almost five days for it to be delivered. It was literally 18 to 20 minutes away at the FedEx facility in Londonderry, New Hampshire at the Manchester Airport. And for four days running, I got a text message from them saying, your unit is on the truck for delivery. Waited around all day only to get a text message that evening saying no delivery was attempted. Basically, they didn't even try to deliver it for four days. And I got that same message over and over, and it finally appeared here late Saturday afternoon. Guys, if you're going to ship something, two companies to avoid, FedEx and DHL. They are hopeless, absolutely hopeless. hopeless. Something shipped via uh, UPS gets here when they say it's going to come here. This unit... Uh, like I say, it arrived at the Londonderry facility and sat for four days. And every day they told me it was on a truck. And for four days or three days, it never came. It, it showed up on the fourth day. Just hopeless. At any rate, I hooked up the BK Precision because it was relatively inexpensive. 
And what I should have gotten was a curve that looks something like this, an IF peak. Now, what I did get was this. And I farted around and played around and kept trying to figure out what I was doing wrong. And I kept saying, this thing looks like it's a retrace issue. Then the light dawned and I took a look at what was supposed to be the linear ramp coming out the back connector on the B and K. And the linear ramp is there to provide your X sweep on your scope. You put your scope into XY mode and directly input a voltage, a linear uh, sawtooth voltage to provide your X sweep and your Y sweep is what your demodulated signal out of the receiver should be. And this is what I had. And you notice that it has a nice curve in it. That is nowhere near linear. Not to mention the horrible up and down noise, the, the broadening of the sweep, that's noise. And what that results in is the trace on your scope going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, where it should be a single linear sweep going in that up, upward direction of the sawtooth. And the sawtooth should look something like this. So you have an upwards ramp and an, an extremely fast return to zero and then another upwards ramp. And that upwards ramp coincides with the increase in frequency from your sweep generator. And it sweeps through the frequency as the trace goes across the screen and you get this nice hump that shows your IF curve. There is no maintenance information, no schematic, nothing available online that I can find for B and K. Their website has all kinds of owner's manuals or user's manuals, but nowhere could I find any information. Now this was sold to me as working properly. So what it's going to do is go back and I am simply going to return it and say, give me my money back. This thing does not work as intended. Again, I could have done all of this video using my spectrum analyzers downstairs, but I said no, nobody wants to spend that kind of money. So what I did is I grabbed my old WaveTech arbitrary waveform generator. Now, this is a synthesized arbitrary waveform generator. It says 100 megahertz on it, which is kind of misleading. It's 100 megahertz clock speed it'll reproduce a 50 megahertz sine wave after a fashion. Don't get fooled by those specs. Find out what you're really getting. At any rate, this was a fairly expensive unit when it was new. I picked it up for, I think it was around $300 several years ago. Again, not a 10 buck test bench item. But these can probably be had a lot cheaper today. Now, WaveTech be careful with WaveTech. I have had so many pieces of faulty WaveTech gear. I rate them right up there with BK Precision or down there with BK Precision. This one, however, works reasonably well, even though the spec is misleading. It does have a very linear sweep output for the X of my scope. It's got the RF output and I can set my start and stop limits and I'm going to start at 445 kilohertz and go up to 465 kilohertz so the 455 is in the middle of the sweep. And by using the sync output and connecting that into the RF, we can put a marker on the screen exactly at 455 kilohertz. It allows you to do that. It's, it's in the programming of the unit. So for our, the, the um, purposes of our experiment, this little unit should work out very nicely. But again, it's a little bit pricey and certainly falls outside the realm of 10 buck test bench. But it was the cheapest thing I had on hand that will function for this experiment. We can't use the precision sweep meter right here simply because that only goes down to 3 megahertz. Its intended purpose was for television and FM alignment. 
does a remarkably good job for something well the other ones were built in the late 40s but something from the 40s and I think this one dates probably to early 50s does a fairly good job <clears throat> excuse me my voice is going away so to start out what I'm going to do is use a standard signal generator my voltmeter we're going to connect it up to the radio and we're going to then we're going to do a standard alignment using the old standby method of injecting a 455 kilohertz signal with a tone using the voltmeter to simply peak the IF transformers. We'll go through that then we'll take a look, we'll hook up the sweep generator, excuse me, we'll hook up the, uh, yeah, sweep generator, we'll kind of call it a sweep generator, it's a waveform generator. We'll hook up the waveform generator and the scope, we'll take a look at what the waveform of the, or the pattern of the IF sweep looks like. Then we'll try to fatten it up and see if the audio improves on reception. And again, you got to bear in mind I have one station that comes in with any kind of signal strength in the valley here. Not to mention all the noise from all the equipment in the house, switching transformers, computers, routers. I guess I could go around and turn everything off in the house that isn't analog. Well, I know I can't because the wave tech's all digitally synthesized. So we're going to have some digital noise in here to contend with on the AM band. We will do the best we can. I did, uh, to be perfectly honest, or full, full uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh hell, my old brain doesn't work anymore. Just to be upfront about everything, I did take this receiver downstairs. I did set up my spectrum analyzer. I did a sweep of the IF after I had aligned it using the signal generator and the voltmeter. The IF peak or the IF curve, as I suspected, was extremely sharp. 3 dB points on the curve, the half power points on the curve of that IF, were somewhere around 15 to 1700 hertz. What that means is the audio that I was hearing that sounded extremely constricted was indeed constricted. It sounded like a higher end short wave receiver that had one of the crystal filters in with only a three kilohertz bandwidth. It was just very constricted. In fact, I had a uh, Radio Shack Realistic DX302, which wasn't a bad little receiver in its day, uh, synthesized short wave receiver many, many years ago. I sold that at one of the flea markets a few years back. I bought that when I was living in Texas. Not a bad little short wave receiver, but when you listened to it on FM on the wide setting, which was about 3 kilohertz, it was just terrible to listen to. I opened that up oh, a year or two after I bought it, replaced the ceramic uh, bandpass filter that was in there, or there was a crystal bandpass filter. I replaced it with a ceramic bandpass filter that had about six kilohertz of bandwidth versus the one that was in there. And the improvement was remarkable. It made it a pretty good sounding radio on AM after that. And it still had the very sharp, uh, very sharp, I forget what the specs were on the sharp or narrow filter, but it was usable for shortwave sideband although the tuning was a little rough on that set it was kind of uh, fast at any rate it made a huge difference so by opening up the IF bandwidth on this radio I'm hoping to improve the audio qualities and again I've got one station that comes in it's talk radio we're doing this whole thing as an experiment an exercise so that if somebody has one of these out there and finds it's hard to listen to after tuning up or peaking all the IFs, you've got a clue as to what to do about it. And it's just fun. I like to experiment and see what we can do. 
the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is move the camera so that I can get at the receiver. And we'll go through peaking the IF alignment again because I played with it downstairs to see what I could do. And I could open it up fairly broad downstairs using the spectrum analyzer. So we'll re-peak it, listen to it, then we'll use the WaveTech to put the uh, IF curve up on a scope, stagger tune the IF cans, open up the bandwidth a little bit. Now we will lose a little bit of sensitivity and we will lose a little bit of selectivity. However, it won't be that bad. Uh, it should still be more than selective enough for the AM band and it should give us some improvement or as much as can be expected with this uh, 1940s speaker it should give us some improvement in the audio quality it should be much easier I'm going to move the camera and we'll get started all right we have the signal generator set on 455 kilohertz more or less up here on the signal generator you can see it we have the voltmeter set up connected can we see that? I guess that's visible. Yep. We have the voltmeter set up so that uh, we can see what's coming out of the detector, the AM detector on the radio. If I. Why am I not getting anything here? Did I disconnect it? Oh, yes, I did. I disconnected the. There we go. Oops. I have an attenuator set up down here just to make my life easier so that I don't have to keep reaching out in front of the camera all the time. And you can, that allows me to attenuate the signal here locally so that I can attenuate it. Those can be picked up at the flea markets fairly inexpensively. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also going to be watching the tuning eye. You won't be able to see that on the camera, but I can watch the tuning eye for AVC or automatic volume control action. We don't want to drive the receiver into the point where the automatic volume control is pulling the signal down. That'll give us false indications on the tuning for one, as well as altering the IF curve slightly it changes the capacitance of the tubes as the grid voltage changes. Some people think that's not important. Other people say, well, it can affect, you know, how well it receives uh, under strong listening conditions or under weak listening conditions. Easy for me to say. Standard or common wisdom, what's the word I'm looking for? Conventional wisdom, thank you, came out of somewhere. Conventional wisdom says, keep the AVC voltage as low as possible or the AVC action as low as possible and do your tuning there. So that's what we're going to do. And that's too much. Okay, we have a little bit of voltage showing on the scope or the meter. Let's see what we can do to peak it. That's no good. This thing is so sensitive I'm assuming it's the metal that's in here that's causing that, or maybe this is so old it's gone conductive. Let's take the metal out and see what happens. Wow. That appears to have gone conductive. That's not good. I guess it's time to retire this thing. That's what happens, on, and someday I'll do another video on Q meters. This is what happens when you use the wrong plastic for coil forms as well. It can seriously degrade them. I'm going to go down, and I just purchased a brand new diddle stick kit. I'm going to go down and get a new diddle stick. Okay. Hang tight, folks. We have our new diddle stick kit here. I was on Amazon the other day and spotted this, and I said, yeah, I think I need a new set of these. And best of all, it's not made in China. It's made in Taiwan. Trust me, the difference between Taiwanese Chinese and mainland Chinese is light years. But I'm hoping this is a decent set. I'm not saying they don't make some stuff that is kind of wank, uh, manky, but 
this should be, at least I'm not supporting the CCP by buying this Chinese Communist Party. Aha! This one's okay. Good. We have a set that's going to work. I guess it's time to retire my old diddle stick because obviously something's gone wrong with it. It's probably been exposed to too many chemicals over the years and the carbon and the plastic is, you know, the chemistry has changed. Sad. That thing's been with me a long time. Anyway, let's move on. And I am going to start just because this one's right in front of me. Okay, that appears to be peaked. Come on, get in the slot. And normally I would do this offline, but uh, actually that's not too bad. Alright, let's see what the top ones look like. And I've got the volume turned down so that you don't have to listen to the generator whine. Come on, get in the slot. Actually, these look pretty close. Okay, what just happened? Lost the ground somewhere. There we go. Hmm. Hang tight while I figure this out. It was the alligator clip for the voltmeter. <laughs> Back in business. Oh, come on, get on there. So it appears we were fairly close. It didn't take a lot to stagger tune it. It took a lot of diddling, but it didn't have to be far off of alignment to open up the bandwidth a little bit. We'll try it a little bit higher. We still, the tuning eye is still mostly open. Just a little more signal strength and we'll do one more tweak and then we'll move on. Yeah, I got a tiny bit out of that one. It peaked just a little bit. Full of millivolts on that one. Nothing there. Come on, come on. Yeah, a couple of millivolts there, maybe. All right, I am going to set up the wave tech. Actually, I might go for my walk first. Is it raining outside? Looks like the rain has stopped. I am going to leave the receiver on while I go for my walk so that everything stabilizes because they do drift a little bit as they warm up. I'm going to leave the signal generator on so it stays stable. The wave tech, I'm not too worried about. The wave tech its frequency is determined by this little unit right up here. I don't know if you can see it hidden away up there. That's a GPS disciplined oscillator. That's within a couple of millihertz of being correct on 10 megahertz. Actually, I think it works out at 10 megahertz to be 0 .0002 hertz off. It's a known bug in those, but they're available on eBay. They're far more accurate than just about anything else you can get your hands on. 
for a uh, time-based standard. The only thing you could do better than that would be a cesium standard. These are tied, those little units are tied directly to the Bureau of Standards in Boulder, Colorado via satellite, so they're extremely precise. At any rate, that is what is supplying the frequency reference for this WaveTech, as well as the frequency reference for this Hewlett Packard frequency counter. And I need nowhere near anything as accurate as these in this lab. I bought that one, that's the second one I own. I bought that as a uh, sanity check just to make sure that this old timer here was on frequency. This is nice because of the LED. It shows up fairly well, I hope, on the video. These LCD units are virtually impossible to see when you're doing a video. Much faster time base, uh, much more accuracy, a couple more di digits of accuracy, but again, absolutely not needed. A $20 frequency counter is more than sufficient. I tweaked this thing in several months ago and when I checked it against the frequency standard after months of sitting down in the basement and not being used, at 10 megahertz it was off something like 2 hertz. So <laughs> let's face it, that's dead nuts accurate as far as working on this equipment goes. And again, this has an LCD screen. You probably won't be able to see it on camera. That's all right. We're just using the outputs as a sweep generator, so no big deal. Oh, that was another thing about that B and K. The time base on it was so slow. When you got down to the 100 hertz or kilohertz region, 1 kilohertz or 100 hertz or 10 hertz, I thought the unit was was not operational when I first got it out of the box because I punched up those frequencies and I was sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing was appearing on the frequency counter and I went back up and checked it on the high end of the band around you know 2 megahertz or something and it would be blinking away on the time base. I'd go back to 2 hertz and there'd be no display and I answered the phone started talking to my buddy and a few minutes later I looked back at it and it was there was a reading on the uh, frequency counter display. Turns out it takes like 10 to 15 seconds sometimes to update the frequency counter at the lower frequencies. Absolutely useless. What I ended up doing was connecting it to this Hewlett Packard counter which has an extremely fast time base and I was able to set it up easily at 455 kilohertz, but trying to do that with its internal counter, you turn the control and wait, and you find out you're overshot. Then you turn the control back and find out you undershot, and then you turn it again and find out you're overshot. It was just hopeless. I still would have kept it. I still would have used it because it was relatively inexpensive, and I have a frequency counter up there on the shelf turned on this noise but that uh, so-called so linear sweep output was broken or non-functional or something if anybody has one out there take a look at it on an oscilloscope and tell me are they all like that or did I get a faulty one I don't know knowing it's B and K they're probably all like that is my guess Okay, I'm going to go for my walk. If I don't do that, my blood pressure goes through the roof. And part of this video will be me laying on the floor doing the kibby. So we've got to get my blood pressure down. We'll get my walk out of the way. And we'll come back after everything's warmed up and stable. And we'll do the alignment using the sweep generator and see what it does for the audio.